The Gospel, according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, Brother, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and calling for you. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Come, Lord and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Children, come forward, please. In our gospel lesson, we're talking about good news and bad news. Do you know the difference between good news and bad news? What's an example of good news? Oh, bad news is when someone dies, yes. Good news is like when somebody's born. Oh, okay. Do you have an example of good news and bad news? No? 
Mallory, do you have an example of good news and bad news? No, okay. Is that because you don't know what good news is? <laughs> or bad news? Austin, let's, let's put it this way. There is a really cute girl who really likes you. Is this good news or bad news? <laughs> this is good news, okay. <laughs> okay, now you know what good news feels like. Lazarus died. Is that good news or bad news? Bad news. Are you sure? Because through Lazarus' death, <coughs> Jesus was able to show the people the power of God. And is that good? So I ask you again, is the death of Lazarus a good thing or a bad thing? Aha. Uh -huh. Because when God is involved, it's all good. Right? Okay, you can go back to this. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If, if uh, somebody wants to open windows, uh, feel free. It's, it's wonderful up here. <laughs> yes. This is going to be a, a sermon of six points and then two points. If I begin to wax eloquent, maybe I can find a couple other points. But let's begin with six points. We're here because of death. Right? Well, that's one of the reasons we're here. We're here in order to hear the word of our Lord. The word of our Lord today is about the death of Lazarus. And that reminds us of our own death. And we come looking for hope. Yeah, okay. And as I was working with the children, we, we tend to think of death as, as a bad thing. But let me tell you, there is something actually worse than death. That's not believing in Jesus. That's worse. And if you think about things that are worse still, what could be worse than not believing in Jesus? Going to the pearly gates as an unbeliever. That would be worse. Right? With me so far? Okay, that's three points. Now, when we get to the pearly gates, who's going to be there? St. Peter, of course. But so is Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, that's good news. Isn't it nice that Jesus will be there? And wherever Jesus is, there is the hope, there is the possibility that he will forgive our sin for all time and welcome us home. And we'll never sin again. Wouldn't that be better news? And what would be better news than knowing that Jesus, and that given half a chance, he will save us for life everlasting. What could be better than that? 
Well, we don't have to wait until the pearly gates to understand this. We can understand this now. And we can go around like people who know. Who have hope. Who believe. That our death will be good news. Because, as I've said many times, there's a party going on in heaven, and we're not there. We finally get a chance. Okay, that's the six points. Now, the two points. What do we do with the six points? How does it change our life? How does it impact us in the way we live? There is a danger with all sorts of good news, including this, that we take the good news and we squash it into a manageable commodity placed squarely in the middle of our existence. And it's not necessarily anything against Jesus. We tend to do all life and squash it into the middle. And we call that being good people. And when we squash everything into the middle, the temptation is to continue to do that. What, what somebody said, it, it's making life into itsy bitsy parts. So we have itsy bitsy deals and itsy bitsy journeys and itsy bitsy faith over many itsy bitsy years. And at the end of 30, 40, 50, 80, 90 itsy bitsy years, where everything is squashed into the middle. What do we say at the end of that? What did our, li our life really mean? What was the point? If the point of our life is that I took care of myself, atheists can do that too. If the point is that I took care of my family, atheists can do that too. If the point of my life is that I was a good member of the community, atheists can do that too. So what's the point? Maybe the point is that not everything needs to be squished into the middle. Maybe the point is that we are called to imitate Jesus, who did not squeeze everything into the middle. It is said that Jesus never went to a funeral where he didn't disrupt it. Because he's not a God of the dead, but of the living. When Jesus was happy, he was ecstatic. When he was sad, he cried. And when he was angry, watch out. Maybe we need to imitate Jesus so that good news is actually good news. So that when we know that, that Jesus loves us, that we belong by the water of baptism to God above, and that the Holy Spirit <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit working to bring us home to heaven, and we know that when we get to the pearly gates, Jesus will be standing there and we believe 
that he loves us so much that he will save us, then why are we not dancing in the streets? Why is there not a smile on our face every single day? Why is this good news withheld from people who are facing bad news? There's a story of Winston Churchill, who was planning for his own funeral back in the mid-60s. And it was a beautiful service, gorgeous music. At the end of the service, there was a bugler up in one of the side balconies who played taps. A sign that the day has ended. The bugler finished, sat down. There was a long silence. A bugler on the other side played reveille. Day has begun. This was the faith of Winston Churchill. It was the faith that we repeat every single night when we go to sleep at night and we don't know if we're going to wake up. But every morning we wake up. And do we thank God? Does that form our day? When it comes to the time in our life when we go to sleep finally, we will wake up just like we do every morning. So let's live like people who are awake, like people who are thankful to a God who loves us so much. He's not willing to put up with our death. Amen.